Good. All right. We have two 12 volt batteries on the front of the trailer, two 20 pound propane cylinders, gas regulators pointed towards this one over here. We're going to open that up. Turns green inside the eye. As soon as this bottle would happen to come empty, it's going to turn red in where the green's at. Then all you have to do is flip it over to that side there, work off of that bottle while you take this one to town and have it refilled. I serviced the trailer on this one, so we'll go back to it. It does have a light, LED lights on the front of the jack, and an up and down switch. For any reason, that up and down switch won't work. It does have a fusible link on the left hand side. Check it first, but there is also a manual way that you can come in through the top and manually crank that jack up or down. It does have the seven way holder on the side of the trailer. Also has your chains to the side of it. As we step down this side over here in the front compartment, which I call the water compartment, there is two handles hanging on the wall. The little Z handle does the tongue jack. The handle up at the top doesn't do anything. It's pretty well useless the way they got the metal on the side of the trailer. Does have a hookup light for hooking up your water hoses on the outside. Does have a 110 outlet out here that is protected by the GFI outlet in the bathroom. You have a park cable hookup and a satellite hookup. The little switch right here turns your little set of LED lights on the front of the trailer on. Does have a battery disconnect. An outside shower. Hot and cold running water out here. Fresh water connection is your white one that fills your fresh tank with water. The black one is your city water connect. There is a hole in the bottom of the compartment that you can bring your water hose and cable lines up for your satellite through the bottom so you can leave the big door shut. Your same blue holes here will hook to the back of the trailer to a port spray connection that will give you cold water on the back side of the trailer. Fresh water drain is the white valve underneath right behind the two blue lines. Then your front connection over here is for your galley tank, which is just your kitchen sink water. Does have the two electric switches for the leveling jacks, not leveling jacks, balance jacks that help stabilize the trailer while you walk through the front of that. And on the back side of the motor here, there is a little rubber plug that you can pull out and a 5 16 socket will crank them jacks up or down if for any reason they won't go on their own. Love nuts on the trailer. It's been torqued at 100 foot pounds. It's what's recommended on the side of the trailer. Cold. The tires are aired under pressure, which is 65 pounds on the side of the tire cold. It does have a black tank flush so that when you're dumping your black holding tank, you can hook a water hose and regulator up to that. It's got a little aerator on the inside that spins around, helps clean more of the toilet paper and debris out of the inside of the tank. Then you also have a hookup light here at the back for hooking up your sewer. And underneath there is two handles. The gray handle towards the front will be your bathroom shower and sink water. The black handle will be your toilet water. Right behind that connection there is two low water drain points. Blue side is the cold side of the water system. The red side is the hot side of the water system. Then we still have two more jack switches back here in the back that operates the two balancing jacks on the back of the trailer. We do have a ladder for going up and checking the roof. My theory on the trailer is the roof is the life expectancy of the trailer. Check it every 90 days. You don't have to seal it every 90 days. But the quicker you can find a problem up on top and fix it, the better off you are. It is also prepped for a backup camera. The backup cameras are $300, $500, and $700. There is a connection for your 50 amp cord. It does have a spare tire on the back. It's not been torqued on. It's been put on with a wrench. But it is there at a pressure, which is 65 or 80 pounds on the side of the tire cone for the spare tire. Outside of the hot water heater connection is next. The electric switch is in the lower left hand corner on the outside. Your gas switch is going to be on the monitor panel on the inside. 
before you turn either source of heat on, you want to make sure that you have water coming out of the pop-off valve before you turn on electric or gas. Also has an anode rod down here in the bottom. The anode rod is the drain plug for the hot water heater, but it is also an anode rod which actually draws all the impurities out of the water to that rod, eats up that rod instead of eating up the inside of the water tank. That same blue hose that hooks to your outside shire at the front will hook back here in the back. Quick connect in and out and we'll give you cold water back here in the back corner of the trailer. In your outside kitchenette, you do have an outside refrigerator. Does have a little freezer up in the top for freezing ice cubes. You do have a outside grill. Comes out, locks into position. Gas line hose comes out and goes underneath. Hooks up here at the back and then comes to the connection here at the back of the trailer. Then you have a valve on it that you have to turn in line with the gas line to have gas coming through it. Still and all, if I'm not mistaken, this outside brass fitting needs to be replaced. They do have a recall on those. The brass valves are cracking. We'll flip the burner up on that. It does have two side shields. It comes down, clicks into place. It does already have an igniter on the outside grill. So all you have to do is push down on it and you hear it click. Usually about three times before it lights. Once it's lit, you can actually tell the heat change on the grill itself. Here again, we're going to flip the two little black levers up. Allows the side shields to come over. Goes back up into place. Little flip comes up, holds that. Going to let that slide right back underneath itself. Does have a doggy catch right by the back door. We have your two outside speakers. I'll have to show you more about them on the stereo when we get to the inside. But it does have a place for another TV out here on the outside. Does have a park cable hookup and a satellite hookup. And a 110 outlet to plug the TV into. Outside of the furnace is next. It's going to suck cold air in the top, hot air out the bottom. I always suggest putting a mud dauber screen over the outside of the furnace. Once it's been lit on propane, for some reason they love that little smell in there. They go in, they build their little dirt nest inside your burn chamber, and then your furnace doesn't breathe properly and causes it to short cycle. In the front compartment up here, there is a light for the front compartment. Another 110 outlet over here on this side here, and that is your 50 amp power cord for the unit. Let me turn that little light off. We're going to go right back to the inside. As we come back to the back door, which is the main entrance on the trailer, the door will open up fully extended. Your steps are going to be mounted up in the door frame itself with a little blue handle. So what you'll do is you'll get the trailer on the site level from side to side, front to back, the best you can. Pull the blue handle, grab a hold of the latch here. It does have two push buttons underneath each one of the legs on the steps. The main thing on the steps is once it comes out and lays down, it has to lay flat in the threshold. That way your door will fit over the top of that properly. To achieve that, you can push the little lever on the back and adjust your legs accordingly to the levelness of the ground. Now we're going to step up into the trailer. It does have a working fire extinguisher on the left hand side as we step in. We're going to come up here to your monitor panel show you that the battery is fully charged. That's not really accurate. To get an accurate reading on the battery you need to have the 110 line unplugged. Freshwater tank is full of water still. 
black tank is empty gray tank one which will be your bathroom sink and shower water and then your gray tank two will be your galley tank which is just the kitchen sink water only the first red switch on the left hand side turns your water pump on between the fresh water tank and the faucets the second red button turns your hot water heater on gas when you turn the button on the little red light up here at the top the door side fault light comes on it stays on for about a minute then when it goes off the hot water heater will go through two lighting processes to light on gas for any reason it does not light on gas the little red light here at the top will come back on the main thing is once you turn the gas on the propane bottles up front come and light your kitchen stove first let the kitchen stove pull the gas back to all the appliances in the trailer which makes the furnace light easier and the hot water heater light quicker if it's already got the gas pulled back to it. If for any reason it doesn't light, that little red light's going to come right back on. I don't think it's going to come back on because the trailer already had gas in the line, so I'm going to turn it back off. This turns your interior lights through the center of the living room and kitchen on. That turns your awning lights on, and then you have a set of accent lights that are above the slide room. The first big flip switch down here at the bottom on the left hand side runs your slide room in and out. The second one runs your awning in and out. I would run your awning out, but we're too close to the trailer in front of us. It doesn't come out very far, but that is the switch that runs it in and out. On your thermostat on the wall, it has a mode button which turns it on. It goes to your fan speed first, which is auto, high, or low. You always run, run it in the auto position furnace and air conditioner. You'll hit the mode button one more time. It brings a little snowflake in the lower right hand corner and you'll dial your temperature down for it. I'm gonna have to kick that AC back off real quick because we are on a light cord. It'll take it a minute to kick it off. Then when we go through that process again, after we pass the snowflake, it'll say heat furnace in the lower left hand corner and we will dial the temperature up for that for the furnace to kick on. Hit that mode button one more time and it says off in the lower right hand corner. As we come around here it does have a 40 inch LED TV inside and a stereo. On the stereo it does have a remote in the top drawer but the push button will turn it on. It says welcome. Zone 2 is your outside speakers which we can crank it up to where you can hear that. That's your two outside speakers there. We'll turn it back down. We we'll hit zone one, turns the speakers in on the inside, and then we'll turn it back off. It also has a HDMI cord that goes between this and the TV if you wanted to play videos. Same way here, it does have a USB port. Uh, it's good for charging your cell phones or anything that would use a USB port to charge. The brown vent on the cabinet is for the heat. I should have showed you in this first cabinet here. The lights on the inside are two-way switches. When you open it up, it's still kind of dark on the inside until it motion senses something going into the cabinet, which automatically kicks the light on. If you turn that switch the opposite way, it will automatically stay on 24-7. That is the same way with the light up here at the top. It is motion centered on the right hand side, on 24-7 on the left hand side. We also have a smoke detector right above us that gives you a little bitty noise if for any reason the trailer gets too smoky. We're going to come to the refrigerator next. The refrigerator has two settings on it. It has one up in the top for the freezer section. It says cold or colder. If you turn it to where it says colder, it keeps all the cold air in the freezer section until it makes ice. Once it makes ice, then you have to turn it back down halfway or down to where it says cold for that here. And then you have the switches down here at the bottom. You can set from one to five. And that is an on and off switch for the refrigerator itself. I like to get it to where it's cold up here at the top. Run this on setting three in the bottom. And it also has a travel lock for traveling down the road that goes across and holds both the doors shut on your microwave. Really about the only thing I can tell you about your microwave, you hit the clock button, let's say it's 430. 
and then hit the clock button again to the two center eyes is flashing. The only reason I set the time on the microwave is for any reason you would happen to lose the 110 power coming to the trailer, the microwave won't have the right time. You do have a light for the stove top and a fan. Anytime you're cooking with the stove top, you do need to have the fan on pulling the fumes from the inside out. It does have a carbon monoxide detector in the trailer. Then we're going to turn the button on the right hand side on that lights up the knobs. You're going to turn it to the high light position and use the striker on the left hand side to light the burners up on top. All three burners will light from the striker on the right hand side or left hand side. Then you can also light the oven with the same striker. Little blue light burning on the bottom of the metal in there. Let that run for just about a minute. And then you can dial your temperature up and the oven will light too. All of them light off the striker on the left hand side. We'll go ahead and turn that back off. If you flip the switch on the right hand side all the way down it gives you a light inside the oven. That way you can see the brownies or the cakes making. Breaker box is next. It does have another brown heat vent beside the breaker box. The breakers are marked from the left to the right exactly what they are with your main breaker being in the center. It is prepped for a second air in the bedroom. Microwave, hot water heater, and converter. Your car fuses across the top are marked on the top of the panel which is the LP, awning, lights, radio, furnace, monitor panel, refrigerator, slide, and the outside balancing jacks. The two remotes the little one is for the stereo, the bigger one is for the TV. We'll step back and show you the TV does actually work. If I'm not mistaken, I got 44 channels on the TV. That's working off the antenna on top of the trailer and the booster in behind the TV. This program contains subject matter and language that may be disturbing to some viewers. Your little your remote is turns your stereo on and off. Turn the volume up on the stereo. We're going to turn it off. The TV also comes out and rotates so that you can pull it out. Turn it over this way so you can see the TV while you're eating or cooking. Or you can turn it back towards the bunk area for the kids. That way they can see it in the back while they're in the bunk area. Then it just folds right back up inside of itself. Clicks into place. All the rest of the paperwork that was in the trailer is in the green bag here. There is two sets of keys for the trailer. One purple key does the front door lock and deadbolt. The other purple key does the back door lock and deadbolt. Then you have the slam locks that's on your outside kitchenette. And the two front compartments is the black key. And you have a 751 key which is actually used for the toolbox underneath the steps. The two lights above the sink have to be turned on by hand. They have a little push button in the center of those. You do have a 110 outlet on either side of the sink that is protected by the GFI outlet in the bathroom. Light switch on the wall in here turns the two lights above the head of the foot of the bed on. There is a place for a TV above the fire escape window with a 110 plug in and a park cable and satellite hook up at the top. On each side of the bed, there is a 110 outlet and a USB port on either side of the bed. The lights above the headboard have to be turned on by hand. You have a little closet on either side. There is a little cubby hole at the bottom of the closet at the bottom. And you have cabinet space at the top. 
the vent in the ceiling up here is prepped for a second air conditioner. If you take the vent out, there is a 110 wiring coming up here, so you could add a second air to it, and that would be a hand-controlled air conditioner. You do also have a fire escape window in the master bedroom on the off-door side, away from the door. There is storage up underneath the bed. Does have two drawers on the left-hand side and a pretty good size storage space on the right-hand side. Does have the struts that holds the bed up. While you're getting into the drawers, are storing something in there. We're going to come back to the kitchen table. It does have a light above it with a little push button in the center of it that turns it on and off. Table comes loose from the wall. The legs fold up, goes down between the bench on the boards in front, and then your two back cushions comes over the top of the table to make a smaller bed there. The vent in the ceiling right above us does have a neural knob to crank the vent up. A little black switch turns the fan on. Let me turn that fan on just to show you that it does work. Couch will butterfly out into a bed. And it also has a fire escape window behind it. Two red handles comes, lifts up. Get it in the center. The window will open up. It is marked for an exit. But you can also raise the window up, clip to the two clips on the side for a cross breeze of air. Does have a 110 outlet beside the couch that will make it for making it into a bed. We're going to go into the bathroom area. Does have a light switch on the wall that turns the light above us on. Another neural knob in the ceiling. Cranks the vent up. A little black switch turns the fan on. Two shelf medicine cabinet. Does have the GFI outlet in the bathroom that protects all the 110 outlets in the trailer. Pretty good sized cabinet space down underneath here. Can store a lot of extra towels. More shrugs in it. On your shower, it's just like what you have at home. It has hot water on the left hand side, cold water on the right hand side. Pulls and opens. Once you're on the inside of the shower, if you little lip on the handle in there that you can pull over to let it come open. It also has a single foot flush on the right hand side of the toilet for the stool. And there is a heat vent there that brings warm air into the bathroom and will also keep the stool from being cold since it is plastic. You also have a round vent in the ceiling that brings air conditioning into the bathroom area. In each one of the little bunk rooms over here. They both have a little light that you can turn on by hand. A little push button in the center of those. You also have the USB ports on either side. And in this back one, if you lift up one side of the bed, the hidden panel back there in the back accesses you into the back of the hot water heater. On the hot water heater, there is two white valves. Both white valves are pointed towards the tank. That is in the normal operating position. You will switch them just the opposite way when you get ready to winterize the unit. Doesn't have fire escape windows top or bottom because it is right by the front door. If you have any questions, I'll try to answer them the best that I can. Thank you for your time.